Hi, in this video I'm going to show you the design of a single arch denture. The single arch denture will be designed on top of a superstructure that we designed in a previous video and will use a partial framework with over dentures as the antagonist. For this design we select the work type full denture. Instead of a material selection we get a selection of production methods and choose print base and teeth. The parameters for dentures are completely different than for crowns and bridges, so I'm not going in detail over all of them. Please note that I activated connectors for the whole denture. And after this, I simply go to the design. Since we are using models created in other cases, I have to import all of them. For the upper jaw, I'm selecting my superstructure with design. And for the lower jaw, my partial framework with over dentures. Since the models are imported, I have to select a view direction for the models as well. For the single arch dentures, you actually have the option to use your virtual articulator as well. Since we imported the models, I recommend checking the position and the direction of the models in the virtual articulator. You can click rearticulate models virtually if it doesn't fit. You can manually move the models or rotate them. But there's also an option to automatically rearticulate them. For this, simply select automatically and then click on the three selected points on your models. After OK, they will be rearticulated. Always remember to press OK in the right side articulator jaw correction dialog first, or the new position will not be taken into account for your virtual articulator movement. If you now press Start Articulator Movement Simulation, you will see the new movements in your articulator being applied to your models. Once the virtual articulator is finished, you can press OK and you will be back in the wizard mode. If you press Next, you will reach the next step which is the model analysis. You will realize that for the single arch dentures, there's only four single steps for your model analysis. For the occlusal plane in this case, we can select the occlusal plane of your virtual articulator. Then you have to select some points for your molars, for your premolars and your incisor point. The midline of your model will be generated automatically based on those points and you're done with your analysis. Then you can just go next and you will get to your tooth selection. For a single arch denture with scalable teeth you always start off with the generic tooth library but you can select any other library you want. You see a numeric value showing you the size difference in regard to your model analysis as well. Once you've selected your anterior and posterior teeth you can just press the buttons to place them. As I mentioned, all of the libraries I'm selecting are marked as scalable, so I have later the option to change the shape and the size of those teeth individually. For single arch dentures, in the tooth placement step you always start off in the chain mode, which makes sense because you have to move around a lot of teeth in regards to each other. For single arch dentures I prefer to first lock the canines and then move the discs at the end of the molars to only adjust and move the complete posterior arch. Then afterwards I lock the discs and move around the premolars and molars to adjust the height and the position in regards to the neighboring teeth. Afterwards, I lock the first premolars but unlock the canines. This gives me control over the anterior teeth. I can move and scale the complete tooth arch for the anterior teeth as one. For small corrections of individual teeth on the other hand, I use the single mode to only move one tooth at a time. Once I'm happy with my tooth setup, I press next to get to the freeform mode. Since I selected a scalable tooth library, I can change the teeth in any way I want using my classical freeform tools. 
please keep in mind that this means I have to print or mill those teeth in the end. Since I selected printed teeth, this is no problem, but if I would want to use stock teeth, it wouldn't make sense to change the shape or size of those teeth. My contact points can be adapted the same way as in every other crown or bridge. Since I use the virtual articulator, I also get the dynamic movements. I personally prefer to select the exclude selected parts option and mark the contact points on my anterior teeth so they preserve their original shape. And again, once you're happy with your setup, you simply press next. In the next step, you design the bottom of your full denture base. Simply select your insertion axis and press apply. You can change all of those parameters based on your printer or milling machine if there is need for it. Once the calculation is finished, you see the bottom of your denture base. Just press next to get to the step where you can draw your finish line of your denture. You have the option to draw the finish line yourself manually, but if you click on the small arrow, you get the detect option. With the detect option, you have to mark at least four points so the software can find the finish line automatically. The further apart those four points are, the easier it is for the software to finish this calculation. Once your stop line is present, you can switch back to the properties tab to change different parameters like the base thickness. You can press apply or next for the base to get calculated. Since we selected the connectors in the dental DB, the connectors are our next step. You can use those to create a complete bridge out of your individual teeth, so you don't have to mill or print all of them singular, but can mill or print a complete arch. The connectors should ideally not be placed inside of the model, because if they intersect the model and the model gets cut away as the bottom part of your denture base, the connectors would be cut away as well. On the other hand, I would also not place them too high up in the approximal contact points, because this wouldn't look very nice in the end. In the next step, I get the option to freeform my whole denture base. The preference how the denture base should look obviously is very individual. I'm just showing you one simple way to do it. First, I use the anatomic tool to free up my tooth shapes a little bit. As next, I use the point of knife tool to separate and simulate the root shapes a little bit. Using the add remove tool, I remove material in two curved lines between every two teeth. The color coding shows me when I hurt the minimum thickness so I can correct this right away. For the posterior area, in this case, I just draw singular lines for all of the separations but you can do this however you please. Next, I'm using the standard version of the brush again. Using add with a very small brush size and an average strength, I simply add a garland around all of the interiors. Since this now looks very overdesigned, as the next step, I use my smooth tool with a very big size so that I can simulate using a flame to smooth out wax as I would in real life as well. Adding material with the point of knife tool can be used to apply a simple version of your frenulum. A 
In the palatal area I first remove a little bit of the material to get a closer look at the actual tooth shapes. Then, using the cylindrical tool and adding material, I add an overdesigned version of my papilla. Please keep in mind that this area isn't as important to design as detailed as you want, because the insertion axis of the teeth will cut away material here. Then, also using the add tool but the standard brush, I can add a simple version of my rugae. And using the point of knife tool, with removing, I can simply add a fossa. And again, I'm smoothing the whole area to give it a more natural look. I'm happy with the outcome of my freeforming, so I'm going to the next step. In this step you can finally adapt your denture base, not only to the model, but also to your teeth. You will see that the whole tooth arch gets one singular insertion axis regarding your base, so you will be able to insert this into your printed base in the end. Here you can see the cutout of your insertion axis for your tooth arch taking effect in the gingiva. This is also a reason why it doesn't make sense to spend too much time freeform these areas. Now that the calculation is finished, you can see the big gap between the teeth at the base. You can also see that the connectors are kind of hidden inside of the gingiva and will not be visible from the vestibular side. Now the only step that is left is the merchant safe restorations. You will get two singular STLs, one for the base and one for the whole tooth arch. Now to show you the adaption, you will see that the whole tooth bridge not only fits on the base, but it also is cut away on the model, so there's a gap between the tooth bridge and the model for the base to fit in between. The base itself, on the other hand, is not only adapted to the model, but also contains pockets for the whole tooth arch. Thank you for your attention.